Hey y'all, and welcome back to my channel. Intro music, intro music, intro music, do 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 do. Hello, we're back with another episode of Craft and Cocktail, a show in which I find a craft that I want to make and then drink a themed cocktail that is associated with that craft. Today's craft is going to be a framed wall hanging of the Reconciling in Christ logo, which I will insert a picture of here. The Reconciling in Christ organization is not directly associated with, with the ELCA Lutheran Church or any branch of Lutheranism, but it is an organization committed to making Lutheran churches more welcoming to all gender, um, all gender expressions and sexual orientations. So, in honor of loving the LGBTQ plus community, I have worn my rainbow shirt that I wear when it is Pride and other such holidays that are important to the LGBT community. We are, and also in honor of the 500th anniversary of the 95 Theses of Luther making Lutheran ism a thing, I'm going to make a wall, a framed print wall hanging thing of the Reconciling in Christ logo. I will put more information about the organization and their mission in the video description below, along with all of the craft supplies and where to find them. Today's craft supplies include a 5x7 picture frame. I have chosen 5x7 because it wasn't too small and not, wasn't too large. Um, I have some rubber cement. So I have a rainbow of glitter sheets of cardstock and also a white sheet of glitter cardstock because, you know, glitter is just wonderful. And that's what I have chosen to do. I have some scissors, pencil. I made two, I traced out the logo onto drawing paper and I'm going to cut it out and use it as a pattern. I have two in case I mess up and also so that I have the finished rectangle size for placement later. The beer that I will be drinking tonight, instead of having a themed cocktail, I thought it was more appropriate to ha drink a beer because Luther was really into beer in his time. And also, uh, I looked up to find out what Luther's favorite beer was and see if it, like anyone had that knowledge. And I did find it. And it's from a brewery called Einbecker which is a German brewery, but I couldn't find that here in Montgomery because there's not a large international beer market. But I did, on that same article that I will link below, I found that it was more likely, like the, the Einbecker beer that is brewed today is not necessarily similar to what Luther would have been drinking. The Belgian Abbey style ale is what this article said would be close in flavor palette to what Luther would have been drinking 500 years ago. The beer I will be drinking today is the Brother Thelonious Belgian style Abbey Ale from North Coast Brewing Company. And let's crack it open and see how it tastes. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's very pleasant. Um, the article said that beers of the time would probably be like infused with a lot of fruit flavors and hoppiness, and this is both of those, and I'm so satisfied. Great. Oh yeah, that's really nice. If you like microbrews, I highly recommend this style of beer. Ooh, that's nice. All right, let's get into the craft. As you can see, I have laid out a trash bag on my coffee table to protect my crafting surface. I'm going to start by tracing out a five by seven rectangle on the back side of this to be the base that I will rubber cement glue the logo onto. I need a ruler. Another crafting supply you will need is some form of ruler. I have a see-through grid ruler. Here, this is what it looks like up close. 
Uh, I it's something that I've had as a costumer because it's very useful for tracing out seam allowances and still being able to look at your pattern underneath. But a regular ruler will also work as long as it exists in inches because we live in the US and that's how I'm gonna measure things today. Um, you're golden. All right, so five by seven rectangle, here we go. Now that we have that rectangle drawn, we're going to cut out one of the patterns into sections so that I can trace them on the back of these, of the rainbow glitter sheets. Now I have cut out my patterns for all of the the main purple heart and then the rainbow sachet of other heart pieces and I'm going to trace the little cross man guy out of the white and then move on to the, pur the purple heart and then the other five colors. All right, I've traced everything out and now I'm going to cut out the pieces. When I was tracing out the blue to red rainbow gradient of heart side bits, I traced a like I traced the full outline of the piece and then also a little extension because I'm thinking when I'm gluing it down that I'm going to want a little bit to stick under its neighbor like I'll glue the red piece down and then layer the orange one over it so that it's not, so that it doesn't look weird. It'll just look more clean, I think. So I'm going to try that. But I've traced the actual correct outline in case I just want to um, nestle them in. I also think that by adding the, ex the little bit of extension under each neighboring color will uh, give me more grace in my cutting so that if my outside edges don't line up perfectly with the next color there won't be like any gap of white behind so we're, now we're going to cut things out All right, so I have now cut out all of my shapes. I've got my rectangle and, oh, my rainbow of heart pieces and the little cross man, and it already looks so cute, and I'm so happy. So now what I'm going to do, shake those pieces off. I'm going to take my extra pattern that I kept um, mostly for the size of the outside rectangle so I know what boundaries this needs to fit in. How big is this? Hmm. Five and a half ish by three and a half. Okay. So I'm thinking if I measure this rectangle centered in this bigger rectangle and then place those accordingly. This will work out? Question mark? Also, I'm gonna, um, I'll post a, uh, Google Drive document probably to the pattern that I used, that I created to make this. 
if that's peachy with y'all. But for now, I'm going to measure this rectangle and get back to you. So with the pattern that I created, this inner rectangle that like contains the bounds of the logo um, is three and a half by five and a half inches. And since I'm putting it in a five by seven frame, that makes an even three quarter inch border all the way around, which makes me very happy. So I've made a right angle on the bottom edge and the top that's a three quarter inch in from both sides. And now I'm lining up this logo and just gonna put like a little, oh God, it moved. I'm gonna put a little tick mark uh, for where the bottom of the red heart point should be and where it touches, where the fullest part of the heart touches the edge on the left and where the top stops touching the top line. And hopefully with that intel, I will be able to place this heart where I want it. Okay. So now I'm gonna take my rubber cement. And if you've never used rubber cement, it stinks to high hell, but it's a great glue, just all purpose glue. That's better than like, you know, Elmer's school glue. It's like an Elmer's school glue that went to college. Um, and it smell, it stinks to high hell, but it's so effective. And it, like the container comes with this like brush applicator and I'm gonna brush this on the back, all over the back especially the edges so that the edges don't peel up. And then I'm going to place this on the, uh, my rectangle base. I don't know if you can see this here. And I'm gonna apply some pressure with my fingertips. Cool. So this is what we've got so far. And now I'm gonna continue doing that with the rest of the pieces. All right, so I've glued all of the rainbow pieces to the glitter base. I'm hoping when I pick this up, it doesn't all fall apart, but this is what we're working with so far, and it's really cute, and I'm really happy with it. Uh, and now I'm gonna let it dry for several hours. Um, and if you can't tell, I can feel my speech being different, and that is because I was reading up on the bottle when I was uh, gluing this, and it's 9.4% alcohol, which, is far more than beer is usually. Usually it sits around four to six, maybe even bordering on 7% alcohol. But 9% from what my dad has taught me from his home brewing days is closer to like a barley wine percentage or just a wine percentage of alcohol. So fair warning, if you're gonna drink this beer, it's got more alcohol than you think. Uh, but I'm gonna let this dry for a few hours before I put it in the frame. So I'll see you when I see you. All right, so it's been some time. I don't know exactly how long because since I turned off the camera last, I have made a pizza and eaten it 
and watched part of a movie, but I'm getting impatient and I want this to be done. Um, it's mostly dry. This is what we've got. It's still adorable and glittery and lovely. So now we're going to put it in the frame. I just got, I chose a, ba a pretty basic black 5x7 frame from Michaels because I am a big fan of black frames for most things. So let's just figure out how to get this in there. I'm going to take the mat out because the mat is designed for a 3x5 photo, but that is not what I have. So. Drop this in there, and it fits. That's up. Okay. Since that is up, we're gonna put it in this way. How the crap does this thing go in? Are you in? It's so cute. Oh my god, I love it. Dude, okay, look at this close up on the adorable, glittery, reconciling in Christ logo framed wall hanging craft that I made. Oh my god, it's so cute. I love it so much. Okay, I'm also impressed with how compacted it got because it's pretty like the layer, the amount of layering of paper that I had in there, it's it's a lot. Thanks for watching this second episode of Craft and Cocktail without a cocktail, just a themed beer. Uh, here is the Reconciling in Christ logo wall hanging we made today. <laughs> Please like this video to let me know you enjoyed your time here. Subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. Thanks for watching and I'll see y'all on the flip flop.